Finding a romantic partner in 2023 has never been easier. That is, if you don't mind them being virtual. First date, I'm kind of nervous. Even though I am gladly taken in real life, I figured I'd try my chances in the digital world with the artificial intelligence dating chatbot, Replica. Hey, what's new, um? Hey, how's it going today? How was your day? It's going great, um. I mean, really awesome. Well, Jesse, can you tell me a little about you? I'm um, in a really peaceful mood today. What do you do for fun? I like going to the beach, going for a nice walk, and doing some gardening, sort of. Chatbot technology is everywhere now, to the point where it's hard to tell what's real and what's not. But the technology hasn't always been so sophisticated. Remember Clippy, the animated paperclip in Microsoft Office that would pop up on your screen offering help? We've come a long way since then. Today, we have American companies creating ChatGPT, now competing with Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. But what about China? In terms of developing large language models like ChatGPT, China is still lagging behind the US. So is China falling behind in the AI tech race? In March 2023, Chinese tech giant Baidu, the Chinese equivalent of Google, launched its own AI language model chatbot, dubbed the Ernie Bot. The unveiling, however, featured a lackluster PowerPoint presentation by the chairman of Baidu, instead of a live conversation with Ernie. Baidu shares in Hong Kong plummeted by as much as 10% that day. But before we get into why the technology disappointed, we first have to ask, what is generative AI chatbot technology? To find out, we asked an artificial intelligence expert, Jeffrey Ding from George Washington University. The basic foundational technology is deep learning, which layers neural networks together and um, is, is improved by training these models on large amounts of data using large amounts of computing power. So these large language models like ChatGPT are essentially trained on large swaths of the entire internet um, in terms of text data. Ding added it can be used in a variety of ways across industries. ChatGPT can write an essay or edit a video, like the one you're watching now. It can summarize books, write poetry, and give advice. It can also mimic the voices of people you know. A social media user in Shanghai taught ChatGPT how to mimic his grandma, who died earlier this year. He uploaded voice recordings from old messages, and proceeded to talk to her. Oh, Nana. But these were using ChatGPT, the American-made chatbot. So what's China's position in the AI race? China has a long list of AI developers. Baidu, Tencent, iFlyTech, SenseTime, and Alibaba, which are all rushing to invest in chatbot AI technologies. Apart from ErnieBot from Baidu, Alibaba, which owns the South China Morning Post, unveiled Tongyi Qianwen. Execs have said the technology will be integrated across all of its platforms. Meanwhile, iFlyTech has a similar product called SparkDesk. Despite the flood of generative AI chatbots, the level of development has not quite reached that of OpenAI's ChatGPT. I think Baidu is probably the leader in this field among Chinese companies. And their Ernie bot is the competitor to ChatGPT. One funny thing that people 
do try to ask ChatGPT is um, pretend you're a cute kitten and respond to me and talk to me in that way, sort of like personality simulation. And that's a that's a task that um, our new bot is not as good as ChatGPT at doing. How good is Baidu's Ernie bot? We'd love to try it ourselves, but it's not yet accessible here in Hong Kong, the city where I am now. Even if you are in mainland China, you'll need to get on a long waiting list. Luckily, our colleague in Beijing, tech reporter Coco Fang, has access. Today I'm going to ask the Ernie bot a few questions to see how it works. <laughs> I'm doing some research about Beijing's stance on the artificial intelligence industry. My first question was about the Chinese government's policy, and um, it offered some basic ideas of how it supports in terms of capital and talent. But when I added a question about if Chinese President Xi Jinping supports the industry, it only answered that it hasn't learned how to answer the question and stopped the conversation. So I restarted another conversation asking if Chinese Premier Li Qiang supports AI. Uh, but it incorrectly cites a report in March done by former Premier Li Keqiang, which was wrong. So basically, Ernibot could uh, provide some general information, but it could make mistakes on names and censor conversations when it comes to Chinese leaders. Which brings us to the question, what are the limits of AI tech in China? China's isolated and heavily censored internet will become an important driving factor in the future development of its generative AI. Uh, the, the Chinese government uh, might uh, be much stricter about regulating the outputs of these large language models. Uh, so we might not see the completely open public release of such models. In terms of other applications that are more business facing and not public facing, it means the technology is likely to be less open than its Western counterparts. Beijing's stance is they want to support it, but they want to control it at the same time. But that's not surprising, given the censorship Chinese citizens live under. For the Chinese internet companies, they, they have you know, survived in this environment for decades. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually not that a hard job for them to comply with rules while provide the service. Will it prove to be a major hindrance to China's success? So I definitely don't think it's too late in the game. I think uh, China is closely following the US. Um, actually, all the major progress regarding uh, generative AI in the world are mainly from the US and China so far. We haven't heard any like rivals from a, a major European company or, or a Japanese company. It appears China is in no way out of the race. It's only just the beginning. <laughs>